Hello and welcome to this video summary of our work, Self-Supervised Natural Scene Reconstruction and Rich Semantic Classification from Brain Activity. I'm Guy Gaziv, PhD candidate from the Michal Irani Lab at the Weizmann Institute of Science, and I'm going to walk you through the main contributions and results from this work. In this work, we consider the task of reconstructing observed images from a subject's fMRI recordings and decoding their novel and rich semantic categories. The available data for the task consists of about a thousand pairs of images and their corresponding fMRI scans without any semantic information. Developing such systems is a milestone towards brain-machine interfaces, dream reconstruction technologies, and is important for the study of consciousness. Traditionally, this paired data is used to learn the mapping between the visual stimuli and their brain activity representation. However, since the data is limited and cannot span the huge space of natural images, natural fMRI samples, and the huge semantic space, such decoders are prone to poor generalization to new held out data. Here is an example of what the reconstructions look like when following a supervised only approach. You see that the reconstructions are quite blurry. We propose to put back-to-back -back an encoder model which maps images to their fMRI and a decoder model which captures the inverse mapping. The following training configuration imposes that images return to themselves under transformation EED. This enables to train on additional data of any unpaired images from arbitrary semantic classes. Those can be images for which we don't have an fMRI recording at all. In our case, we used additional 50,000 natural images from 1,000 rich ImageNet classes. Importantly, this introduces adaptation to the statistics of natural images and their semantic classes. Moreover, we can also cascade the encoder and the decoder the other way around, imposing that unpaired fMRI samples are mapped to themselves under transformation DE. Once again, you have the liberty to choose here your unpaired data to train on. Our approach encourages to use here the unpaired fMRI samples from the test data, but without using any of their corresponding images. Since those images are never used in training, it is perfectly legal to train on those test fMRI samples, which are just the samples from the decoder's input space. This training configuration adapts the decoder to the statistics of your test fMRI data. This self-supervision enables to achieve state-of-the-art image reconstruction results, here presented for two very different fMRI datasets, fMRI on ImageNet and Vim1. Notice how using our approach significantly improves upon the baseline of the supervised-only approach in both cases. The benefit of our self-supervised approach extends beyond the task of image reconstruction. It further allows large-scale semantic classification to novel categories from fMRI data, namely detecting the correct class label out of more than a thousand rich classes. Coming to our method, we conduct training in two phases. In the first phase, we train the encoder alone, in a supervised way. This enables the encoder to converge first, and serve as strong guidance for the decoder, which is trained next. In the second phase, the encoder's weights are kept fixed, and we train the decoder on three objectives simultaneously within each single batch. These objectives include supervised training on paired training data, unsupervised training on unpaired natural images, and unsupervised training on unpaired test fMRI data. Different than our recent NeurIPS paper, we introduced here high-level perceptual similarity constraints on the output reconstructed images in LD and in LED. Let's look more closely on how it works in the ED path. 
The perceptual similarity was previously proposed as a metric which highly correlates with human image similarity perception and involves a range of visual feature representation levels. Here we apply perceptual similarity between the input and the output image in the ED path. This enables to augment the decoder training with data from a much larger semantic space of thousand rich ImageNet classes. Note that this is achieved without using any explicit class labels whatsoever. These perceptual similarity constraints underlie both the high quality of image reconstruction as well as the high semantic classification performance. To classify a reconstructed image to its novel semantic class, we follow a correlation-based nearest neighbor approach against a large-scale gallery of class representatives. To this end, we extract deep features from the reconstructed image and from random images drawn from more than a thousand ImageNet classes. The average features within a class define the class representative. Using the perceptual similarity together with our self-supervised approach greatly improved our reconstructions, making them the current state of the art. This is supported both by image metric based and behavioral evaluations. Note that our method reconstructs impressively not only a selected few test examples, but the vast majority of them. We visually demonstrate the semantic classification of the reconstructed images by our method. Here we present the top five predicted class labels out of more than a thousand ImageNet classes. Note that even the known ground truth labels are oftentimes semantically reasonable and relevant as well. We quantify the classification accuracy for various classification difficulty levels, detecting the ground truth among a gallery of 50 up to 1000 classes. Note that even for the challenging case of a 1000 way classification, our method scores more than twice the accuracy of the supervised only approach and at least 100 times better than the chance level. What happens with all the remaining incorrect classification cl cases? How bad are they? We found that even in those cases where the ground truth label is not correctly predicted, the classification results are still oftentimes very reasonable, visually and semantically. For example, the camel is wrongly predicted as Arabian camel, or the fish is wrongly predicted as other types of fish or amphibians. The high classification accuracy is greatly attributed to the introduction of the perceptual similarity metric, which involves low to high level features. We found that limiting the perceptual similarity to lower level features only dramatically decreases the classification performance, whereas including the high level constraints is critical for the high classification accuracy. Finally, we study whether our trained models are biologically plausible in terms of the receptive field they learned. By computing the gradient of each voxel output in the encoder with respect to the input image, we reveal the voxel's receptive field. We then estimate the location and the radius of the receptive field and plot the resulting retinotopy map of all the voxels. This map shows standard and known retinotopic structure, which emerged entirely in a data-driven manner. One can clearly notice the vertical horizontal meridian transitions in the polar angle plot, and similarly can find increasing eccentricity from fovea periphery axis and from low to high visual areas. Altogether, this suggests that beyond the reconstruction and classification performance, our model virtually learned biologically meaningful voxel tuning properties. I'm Guy Gazeev and thank you for watching.